This video is all about Tetraponera rufo nigra. Everything that you need to know is right here. Tetraponera rufo nigra is one of the most wanted exotic ant species by all ant keepers besides harvester ants, bull ants, leaf cutter ants, and dynamics gigas. Why? Simply because they are hard to raise from a single queen. I'm just kidding. It is all because of its iconic long and slender bicolored body. In the Tetraponera genus, Rufo nigra is the only bicolored species. Also, having a very painful stinger. Yep, those are the drones with flat bottom tip. In other words, penis. Tetraponera rufonigra is an arboreal species and they nest in tree trunks. They are monogenous in nature, which means one queen in one colony. But someone in Singapore actually successfully raised the colony with three queens in it by starting off with 21 queens. I guess you know what actually happened to the rest of the queens. Indeed, this species is very hard to raise from a single queen because the queen always die without laying any egg. There's no natural flight season and the queen doesn't fly out after the rain. Therefore, to encounter a queen ant in the wild is extremely rare. But if you ever do caught a queen ant, here's how you should keep it. Now, me and my brother have tested out various ways to raise them. We've tried ordinary testing setup, natural setup, high humidity, no humidity, only wood, all failed. Until my brother tested out the new setup, he succeeded. My friend tried his setup and he succeeded as well. As for me, mine did too. Here's what you need. The test your setup with little water, split the nesting space to two to three partitions, and give it an outward. That's it. Simple, right? Then feed the queen a drop of honey once a week, a pre killed roach once in two to three days. You can feed them superworms or mealworms as well. You need to feed the queen because Tetraponera is a semi claustral species. You can check on the queen every day because she doesn't get stressed out easily. That's basically all you need to do and wait for 2 months. What you are looking at here is an 18 month old colony with approximately 800 to 1000 workers. This is my brother's colony with controlled feeding because they grow extremely fast. They are basically very easy to keep and a very hardy species. Once the queen got her first batch of workers, there's no stopping them anymore. Check out this super colony by David Tan. This is by far the biggest colony of Tetraponera rufo nigra I have ever seen being kept in captivity. It is around the same age as my brother's colony, but his worker counts probably have exceeded 2,500 because he feed them every single day.
So in order to keep them, you need to know them. So here are some interesting characteristics of these species that you might want to know. First, they have a strong venom and they will sting you whenever they get the chance to. Just look at this worker constantly trying to sting the brush. In a scale of 1 to 10, if the pain of their sting is 10, the sting of Solenopsis geminata is only 2 to 3. That's a first-hand experience by my brother. Second, they have strong grip. They are not called arboreal ants for no reason. Third, they have strong mandibles. Just look at how difficult it is for me to remove that ant from the brush. They have all the criteria to be great hunters, but they are bad in hunting. Well, they seem to be blind and can't really see the prey even when the roach is just right in front of them. That's why they detect their prey by vibrations. But because their venom is so strong, one sting from them will immobilize their prey in just a few minutes. This is an adult Dubia roach struggling to move. And they seem to like fish and shrimps as well. Remember the qualities they have to be great hunters? Well, these qualities actually made them the ultimate Houdini of the ants. If I get to choose whether to have Tetraponera rufonigra or Solenopsis geminata escape in my house, I will choose Solenopsis geminata. Tetraponera have a very hard exoskeleton, which makes them hard to squash. Even if you do manage to squash one, the odor of their venom is awful. They are not afraid of heat nor light. David once put a heating lamp right on top of his formicarium when he was trying to move them out of the old formicarium. After half an hour, the ants ended up in a dead curl. But after he removed the heating lamp, the ants came back to life. That's how hardy they are. They can cross literally any barrier. They can swim, they can walk right past Vaseline and Fluon. A huge colony like this will require you to apply baby powder barrier every single day and they can chew through apparently anything. My brother's colony escaped by chewing through the vinyl tubing. As for David's colony, they even tried to chew through the acrylic through the breeding holes. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, the light doesn't bother them and they favor high temperature. If you are keeping them in an air-conditioned room, 
they will not be active nor will they grow fast. But I doubt they can survive in an aircon room. So don't keep them in an aircon room. That's it guys, that's all you need to know about Tetraponera rufonigra and that's basically all that I know about Tetraponera rufonigra. So if you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment something. Don't forget to share this video if you find it useful and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time.